Our final honoree tonight is Morgan State University President David Wilson. He has achieved much at the institution he's led since 2010. He procured the university's largest ever research contract, transformed the physical campus with state-of-the-art facilities, and last year secured a record-setting $40 million donation from philanthropist Mackenzie Scott. But the accomplishment he's most proud of is the $5 scholarship fund he established in 2011 to help Morgan students who are having financial difficulties stay in school. It represents the day Dr. Wilson left rural Alabama, where he lived with his parents and nine siblings, to become a student at Tuskegee University. On the day he left, his sharecropper father gave him a $5 bill. He had been saving it for that moment to offer as an investment in his son. I may not be around to witness it, his father told him, but you will go far, and indeed he has. Dr. Wilson earned both bachelor's and master's degrees at Tuskegee, and then went on to Harvard University, where he added another master's degree and a doctorate in education. Before coming to Baltimore to become the 10th president of Morgan State University, Dr. Wilson was chancellor of the University of Wisconsin Colleges, a vice president at Auburn University, and an associate provost, provost at Rutgers University in New Jersey. He serves on the boards of multiple education organizations and was a member of President Barack Obama's Board of Advisors on Historically Black Colleges and Universities. As Co Congressman Kwaisi Umfume, chair of Morgan State's Board of Regents, told us, very little happens in higher education where Dr. Wilson is not called upon to give advice. The Baltimore Sun is pleased to include him in this year's class of inductees into the Business and Civic Hall of Fame. But before we ask Dr. Wilson to join us, I'd like to invite Kareem Kuzami from BG&E to the podium. He will present the award to Dr. Wilson. Mr. Kuzami. Well, thank you, and um, I'll keep this short. You know, it is a pleasure and an honor to present the award to Dr. Wilson. The partnership BG has had with Morgan State has been a very strong one, and each day it's getting stronger, and that's really due to the commitment Dr. Wilson has to his school and the students there. Uh, we are very excited about seeing what the future has in store with Morgan, and we are very honored to be partnered with Morgan State and look forward to continuing to contribute and lift up our communities in partnership. So it's my honor and privilege to uh, award this year's, uh, award, I guess the award to Dr. Wilson as this year's Baltimore Sun Hall of Fame inductee. Thank you. Oh, that was a really surprise. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, you know, um, when you're the last person to actually be presented, uh, and you're standing between you and home, I, I had to draw upon perhaps some advice that my very best friend, who is the former president at Morehouse College, Dr. John S. Wilson, we've been friends for 30 years, uh, he often says to me, well, David, you know, just follow the five Bs. I said, well, John, what are those five Bs? And he said, be brief, brother, be brief. <laughs> and so I certainly hope I can do that this evening. Uh, so uh, first of all, I am just so incredibly uh, honored and humbled uh, to be inducted into the Baltimore Sun Civic and Business Hall of Fame uh, with just such an incredible and impressive group of business and civic leaders. You just don't know how humbling this is for me. I really do appreciate the incredible partnership, Krim, that we have with BGE and certainly look forward to growing that. You know, I have come up through higher education where the connection between universities and the states or regions in which they're located and the cities in which they're located has been my primary menu. I was recruited to Rutgers 
to make sure that Rutgers Camden was not just in Camden, but of Camden. And so when you go to Camden, New Jersey today, and you look at all of the economic development along the waterfront, that is the result of the work that we did. I was recruited to Auburn to be the vice president there because the university was not living up to its mission to serve the entire state of Alabama. And I was asked to come in and help that institution rethink its mission, re-engineer itself. And so if you go to Atlanta and drive from Atlanta down to Auburn, 120 miles, you see all kinds of economic development activity along Interstate 85. That is the result of the work that we did there for 11 years. And when the Board of Regents came knocking on my door after I left Auburn and went to Wisconsin to lead one half of the 26 campus University of Wisconsin system, I thought I had gone there to stay 25 or 30 years and retire. I struggled with the decision as to whether I should leave. I had never set foot on the Morgan campus. I lived in Philadelphia all those years, but I had never been to Morgan. And they simply asked me to come out here and take a look. And I said to them, I think I would do this, but I'm not giving you any promises. And I came out and I walked the campus and I saw potential and I saw potential in our city. And I looked in the faces of so many of those unbelievably brilliant, stunning students who looked like me and who were so incredibly brilliant and many of them didn't know it. And I realized that I needed to be here in Baltimore and at Morgan and not in Wisconsin. And so to close this, the work that we are doing at Morgan is really about giving my father, Trisha, a return on the investment that he made in me. I grew up in this little shanty in rural Alabama with no plumbing, no electricity. I didn't go to school full time until I was in the seventh grade. I went to one of those little Rosenwald schools where they had five grades in one room with a big pot belly stove with coal to keep us warm. My sixth grade teacher was the late Mrs. Louvenia Abernathy Coates, the sister of the late Ralph David Abernathy. And she said to me one day, you know, I want you to go home and tell your father something. I want you to tell him that if he could figure out a way to send you to school five days a week, you really, really have a bright future. And I told my father that when I got home, and here's what he said to me. He said, boy, college, college is for white people. And we never spoke about it again. And then five years passed, and I had been turned on by the magic of education. I had applied only to one school, Tuskegee Institute. That was the best college in America from my perspective. And they accepted me. And I got up that morning to pack my little two or three items to in the vernacular catch a ride over to Tuskegee. And my father got up in the adjacent room. And he came into the front room as I was about to go out the door. And he said to me, he said, David, this time he called me by my name. He said, son, I'm so proud of you. He said, you're about to do something that no one in this family 
has ever, ever done. He said, you're about to go to college. And he said, you know, five years ago, you told me you wanted to go to college. And do you recall what I said to you? And I said, yes, Daddy, I recall. Because it was so painful. And he said, well, let me tell you what I was really thinking. He said, what I was really thinking was, how in the hell am I ever going to pay for you to go to college? He said, I've been saving for this day. He said, I've been saving for the day when I would see my little David go out that front door to college. And he said, hold out your hand. And I held out my hand, and he put his hands in his overalls. And he pulled out something that he called a piece of money. And he put it in my hand. And he put it in my hand so hard. And he put his hand over mine. And I looked in his eyes, and it was the first time I'd ever seen my father cry. And he said, now, this is my investment in you. Give me a return. And I went out the front door as the sun was coming up and opened my hand, and Trisha, there in my hand, was a $5 bill. That was all that he had been able to save for five years to send me off to college. So the work that we are undertaking at Morgan to ensure that that institution will truly be of service as an anchor institution in this city in research, in academic outreach, in stellar teaching, in economic development, in educational reform, is really designed to give my father a return on that $5 investment. I'm humbled. I appreciate this recognition. And once again, congratulations to all of the other honorees. Thank you.